very good indeed. She'll be a comfortable leader after this excellent effort in her fit. Final seconds of the third, and here's Wade. Got it! A third three of the quarter. Look at how braced that right leg is. Look at the right knee and right thigh and the extension here. And watch the coil on that shirt right now and how far back that club. Look at that right knee and right thigh still absorbing all that, that power that's built in now. And then look at the sort of squat turn and that turns the hip out. Delay the hand action. Whack right there at the bottom. Extension right there. Full follow through right up against the nape of the neck. Watch this. Just like an Adonis follow through. Look at that. Hi there team, uh, some great video there of Valley, Valerie Villies, massive shot put, uh, some a long shot basketball, quite long range, and our golfer throwing a huge amount of force into that swing. So how do these athletes produce so much force? The simple answer is force summation, and so we're going to go over the important aspects of force summation and more importantly, how are we going to apply this to volleyball? Definition of force summation. Uh, this is when we use multiple body parts or muscle groups to produce force. This force is transferred into the movements of physical activity. Force summation produces a larger force than if only a single body part or muscle group is used. So, how force summation works. Well, basically, the more body parts that are used, the greater the force that is produced. And this, essentially, is the basics of force summation. Secondly, each body part accelerates and then decelerates after use. And we're going to kind of look at that a little bit later on in the presentation. The greater the range of movement of joint, the greater the force produced. So uh, if you're throwing a ball, for example, the further back you pull it, that ball before you start throwing forward, the greater time you've got to produce force. And the movement is whip-like in effect, and that's another really important point. And we're, again, we're going to see that later on in the video, where um, we have some baseball pitchers uh, who create a massive amount of force through their legs and torso and transfer into the, um, into the arms in a real whip-like effect. So the whip-like effect starts where these large body parts um, pass their accelerational force into the smaller parts, creating a very, very fast final movement in the final segment. And that's where, with a whip, that's where you get that crack at the end of the whip. How can force summation be used most effectively? Well, another real fund fundamental is we generally go from large muscles which are closer to the body, or proximal, to smaller muscles, which are more distal or further away. So generally, the movement is initiated from the core. Uh, generally, the, the hips are, are huge in creating the initial force and transfers to the smaller body parts and, and the contact point if you're hitting or the release point if you're throwing. The use of larger muscles to produce force can allow the finer muscles at the distal end of the chain to focus more on accuracy. A classic example of this would be basketball set shot, where the larger muscles are used and those fine, the wrist, fingertips used for accuracy in the, in the final part of the shot. The timing of force summation is massively important to the outcome. So, um, we're going to look at that next. It's also called the kinetic link principle. So if you are Googling this, um, the kinetic link principle, it's got some really good articles on it. So this diagram here is a, is a classic diagram of how force summation and timing works. If your timing is too early, each one of these segments is a body part. So as you see lower on, the legs, then the hips fire the shoulder fires, the elbow, and then the wrist. And you see in this um, part of the diagram that's circled, the next body part is firing a little bit too early before the legs are at its peak, the hips are fired already. Um, before the hips force reaches its peak, the shoulder is fired. So this is inefficient. 
and results in a lower amount of force. So same goes with um, if we're too late with our timing. So the legs have gone, uh, it's, it's past its peak amount of force and it's starting to slow down and then the hips fire. Every segment is too late which results in again a smaller amount of force. So with a well-timed uh, shot um, there's a lot more force with the correct timing. So each segment has fired when the previous segment is at its peak. Uh, the too early or too late shots, they would look quite uncoordinated. If you looked, them in, looked at it in, in real time, uh, it would look quite uncoordinated. The, the well-timed shot throw um, would look really fluid. So looking at a kinetic link principle in action, um, we see that this baseball pitcher uh, really utilizes the, if you look in the, the second picture, really utilizes the legs to really create a lot of force, which then uh, a lot of for force from the back hip um, through the legs into the back hip and transfers um, up into the hands arms and it's really important that this the hand is trailing the elbow before the release so that that creates that whip like effect finally the follow through the follow through is a really important part you know you've you've produced a lot of force when you've um, used force summation properly and so it's really important that we get a good follow through for several reasons Number one is uh, you get an increased amount of power or force production in, in, the, in the skill because you're not slowing down in the final mo moments, you're following right through. You've got an increased accuracy if your follow through is, is aligned with where you want the, the shot to go. Follow through is really important to increase your accuracy. A good long follow through, you'll see um, deceleration of the body parts over a longer period of time, which can help reduce the chance of injury. And again, this the professional baseball pitcher in the final video, you'll see his follow through. His follow through is, is very, very long. His leg comes up really, really high to help stop or decrease the chance of injury. And finally, a good follow through can get you into a good position for your next action. Uh, in volleyball, it might be hitting the volleyball and then your follow through takes you into the court and badminton and overhead clear. You play the shot, you follow through and um, take your place in the middle of the court where you can react to the next shot. A spin bowler in cricket bowls the ball, his follow through gets him into a good position to, to field the ball. So that that's the follow through. In this video is a regular athlete and you can see that his hand isn't too far behind his elbow so he doesn't get that whip like effect so if you have a look at um, this last professional baseballer he really brings his hand right back behind his elbow and there's a distinct whip like effect as you're watching this I want you to think how this relates to our volleyball serve and the volleyball spike, the two skills that we want to get a lot of force and power out of. And look out look at this follow through. And we'll finish by watching um, a couple of volleyball spikes and a volleyball set. Obviously, in our volleyball serve, our feet are grounded, so obviously the force is produced from there, but these ladies are up in the air when they're spiking, so where, where is the force initiated from? Um, the next video, the next um, spiking shot will show a bit better. This volleyball setter, is she using force summation? As we watch this, this is the final spike. Have a look at the, the body motion. 
and can you tell where the force is generated from?